Okay. So you guys ready for uh, some pre-lunch excitement? <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Okay, so if I stand over here, you guys can see the, uh, the exciting stuff. Okay, now, what I wanted to talk a little bit about today was notify support. Um, you know, I'm not expert in this, but I think as you guys know, there has been um, over the last three years some changes, some improvements. But a long time ago, there's some f fun history about notify. So I deal with SMB a lot. I'm also a member of the Samba team. So Samba team was what drove the original notify into the kernel in the first place, Tridge's work. There's a kind of an irony with that. Uh, so I'm gonna give an example of it. I'll talk about the problem and then how we might fix it. You guys may have better solutions, um, so let's, let's dive into that. So as you guys probably know, uh, if you had a Windows or a Mac laptop, it's very common whenever you open any file window, any you know, Explorer, right, or the equivalent on a Mac, it's gonna populate with all the files in the directory and go read their icons and set little things at the bottom of the icon depending on attributes it finds. So the reason this is important is that if I'm editing a presentation and then I'm dropping it in some shared drive and Dave's editing a presentation, I'll see it. I'll see his show up automatically. I won't have to do anything. I won't have to poll. I won't have to, uh, back in the dark ages of OS2, they called this the wheel watcher. The wheel watcher just they're polling. But many, many years ago, they. Uh, they added notify support to Linux to avoid this. Well, ironically, when they changed to iNotify, that broke it for clients. And, uh, you know, the remote systems co connecting to Linux could, could see notify changes. Um, you know, the servers could, could see some of this, but it was, uh, it was kind of a mess because it, uh, it changed the client API. Um, so network file system clients or cluster clients have no way of waiting on these easily right now. Uh, maybe they could hook it in user space, and what I do in the SMB driver is I have an, an IOCTL that you can call. If you want to wait on a notify event, you have to call an IOCTL, but then we'd have to change all the apps in user space to use a separate IOCTL for each file system. So um, file systems are not told to wait on anything right now. So there are file systems that call out to wait on things, right? There's cache file systems that call out to wait locally and there's notify events that file systems can call to notify that a read has occurred or a write has occurred, but there's no way that they can tell that their inode has notify events queued for it. Um, and this matters for Linux GUIs too, because you know, you've got, you know, people have um, the equivalent of a, you know, we have, we have an explorer here in, in Linux as well, right? So if we wanna go look at uh, files locally, that matters. If Dave changes or adds a file to a directory, I want to see it. Okay, so here's an example from Windows. So if you look at this, from a remote drive, I create a file junk, or from a local drive, I create a file junk. It's automatically refreshed on the remote mount. This is Windows. Right? Happens the same in most operating systems except Linux. So from a different client, I'm creating junk, but this client sees the junk that was created automatically without me having to do any polling. That's normally how you expect it to work. That's the whole reason for the, the API in the first place. But iNotify doesn't call into the FS. So if you look at this function here, this is um, update existing watch. You can see how update existing watch works here. Um, it calls into um, find mark, container of, it sets the mask, but it, there's no call out to tell Ceph or to tell AFS or to tell SMB. Um, I don't remember, does NFS have a equivalent? I guess you could have a directory release, delegation, right? Does NFS have a notify async? The protocol has it, but it's not implemented in Linux. Yeah. I mean, it's super common thing you see in other OS, and, you know, there's no point in, in doing it for Linux for NFS unless you actually had an API that could call into the NFS driver. But, you know, from the SMB perspective, it's not, uh, it's very commonly used. There's also an FA notify, and I don't want to dive in too much to FA notify, but these file system events are also interesting. Um, 
and a little bit confusing to me. Um, there's these bit marks that you wait on, but uh, FA notify and I notify are in the same directory tree, and you guys can look at that. Whether FA notify is as useful, I don't really know because I don't know how many. One thing I couldn't find trivially last night, and you guys might know, is how many apps actually use FA notify. Obviously, there's some very important ones that use I notify. Uh, Steve. Yes. So FA notify was when it was conceived, it was used for and created by uh, antivirus vendors. Uh, for the permission events, which are blocking events. But since then, there's been a lot of work to add more functionality to FA Notify. And it's relevantly recent, so it started uh, coming in with 5.1 and more functionality later. So uh, in 5.10, there's FA Notify is almost, uh, it's almost a super set of iNotify, mm -hmm. right? And of course, it adds a lot more features, but it, mm -hmm. it uh, implemented most of the features that were available in iNotify and not available in FA Notify before. One very big feature that I added to FA Notify that did not exist in iNotify is watching the entire file system. Mm -hmm. Okay, so instead of recursive watches. And uh, I don't know. Um, so. There are not many applications because it's new, right? Yeah. And the applications using iNotify are uh, older. Uh, what I did do is uh, I went and implemented for the library iNotify uh, tools, uh, which is where the iNotify wait and iNotify watch mm -hmm. uh, utilities are. I added support for FINotify. So now the recent release um, you can you have an addition on top of the tools I notify wait I notify watch you have the tools FS notify wait FS notify watch mm -hmm. which you can use to watch a file system or a file it doesn't matter but using the FA notify um, API mm -hmm. That's, um, I think this is extremely useful so one of the key questions though is how it maps to let's say what's available in current file systems, you know, SMB, NFS, AFS, F, whatever. So in the S I'll, I'll show you in a second for SMB. We have the choices for notification of doing, uh, you know, best effort, async notifications, or doing things like delegations or leases where we guarantee we'll be notified. 100% guarantee we'll be notified about the remote change. Um, and, um, you know, obviously we, I think NFS uses it more than SMB right now, but we use it on the root directory and it's being, um, I just had some patches for 5.19 to extend it more. But those, you know, we can wait on any event relating to a directory or a tree. Um, what this originally, what I notify was originally designed for was to support async, uh, the best effort, it's called um, change notify um, over the wire. And um, that's an async thing, not a, it doesn't, it doesn't sit there and wait for the client to respond. So there are additional, one thing I'm curious about is here's the iNotify flags in the Linux headers and you know, things, events like a subfile is created or you've, uh, you've modified a file or you've accessed a file, or you've deleted a file. Those are the most common events I would think. And are there other events that, you know, other than a file being accessed, modified, deleted, created that FA notify requires? beyond these here. What do you mean by requires? Well, what I mean is that, I'll, I'll give you an example. In, in SMB, I believe there is a notify event on an alternate data stream or an X adder being created. Okay, great. I don't know if NFS could support that or AFS could support that, but there is an option to wait on other things than, I wanna wait on this directory to see if a file's created, great. But do you want to wait on this directory for something that the, the file system can't support? There may, be thing, there may be flags that you can pass in that can't be supported. And I don't remember exactly how the mask might be set up so a file system can say, well, I can tell you if a file's created or deleted, but I can't tell you if a file's accessed. So are you asking about FA Notify? FA okay. Notify has a very similar uh, okay. Uh, okay. set of uh, masks. It has some 
uh, additional uh, uh, events for execute uh, and stuff like that, but uh, I mean, if there's something mis missing, we can think about yeah. adding it, but. Uh, so he here, here's what it, what it is in the Linux I notify headers. I'll, I don't have the, uh, the NFS RFC pulled up to look at what NFS has uh, or a AFS, but those you know, are probably a subset of SMB. For SMB, these are the things you can filter for or, these, or what can be watched for. You can look for changing particular timestamps. Look for changing the file name, deleting, creating, writing, right? So these are the kinds of things uh, that, uh, so I don't know, I mean, these map pretty well, I think. Yeah, look, if, uh, I, I don't know if applications, uh, I need to argue if there are applications that need to know specifically about the change of extended attribute. Yeah, but we don't have to use that. You don't, you don't have no, to. No, no, you yeah, don't yeah. have to. It's, yeah. a, it's okay, it's okay yeah. if... Uh, but changing the ACL, changing the rich ACL or changing the POSIX ACL, change security might, right? Maybe, if you can show that there's interest, but then only SIFs will support this event, so... I mean, uh, you, could, you could have the POSIX yeah, local true. API, the POSIX ACL API supported yeah. locally. Yeah, and I, personally, I would think that I would want to be notified if somebody changed permissions underneath me without permission, right? So I got this, you know, here's a Ubuntu box here, right? And if somebody's, I might have an event that I'm looking to see if somebody's changing ACLs under me, I don't know. Right. Forget so, from remote, but I think it's fairly close. Streams are, are similar to extended attributes, so we don't have to talk about that. But I think it maps fairly well the events you can watch for. And I didn't look, like I said, I didn't look at the NFS RFC for this or the AFS one. Um, and you can return these as, you know, so you're, you're filtering for this and what can be returned is, you know, you added or deleted whatever you're, you're waiting on. So I think it maps pretty well. So. In, in terms of applications on Linux that use iNotify or notifications like this, it's mostly desktop file, things like desktop file managers and stuff. So KDE, if I remember rightly, has will start, you can set a watch through the KDE infrastructure and it will start up a daemon to do the watching for you. Yep. GNOME appears to have something similar. It, it seems to watch for mostly directory change events, but also for permissions changes on files because it may be displaying the permissions all the times. And so it will update the thing if those change. And if notifications aren't available, I think it polls. In the oh, background. it's not that the notifications are not available, it's just they're not granular. You get a notification for attribute change. Yeah. You just cannot request for specifically being yeah, notified but, but, for X other change. But yeah, but it is polling for some sort of attribute change. So polling or watching some sort of attribute change. Yeah. Yeah. And then it has to work out what changed. But there are applications in Linux that do this. Uh, mostly desktop environment applications. But also, Wine will do it, I, I would suspect. I, I use it in cache files. I'm sure there are other places that use it. Yeah. I mean, I think it would make uh, a we lot have, of... We have a few questions for remote attendees, and uh, yeah. I really wanted to use the, this opportunity to see how we can uh, uh, let remote attendees uh, really participate, because um, you've been asking for this, Steve, for a long time, but yep. uh, now a uh, few uh, developers also uh, yep. uh, took a shot at implementing something like this. And let's see, first of all, um, Vivex says, uh, what's the equivalent of a stream in FS Notify, in, in iNotify? What's the stream? Can you go so back one slide? Yeah. Um, so in the Windows world, a stream is associated with a file like, uh, so a stream is like an extended attribute, but it can be, you can do seek, read, and write on it. With an extended attribute, you typically replace the whole attribute, right? Where with a stream, it's the same kind of thing. Um, there are many people who dislike streams as a feature of other operating systems. The concept that you have a file that has its main data stream, right? The main data stream is what you're used to. Um, and then it has these other 
alternate data streams that are sometimes used. As an example, historically, what sometimes was used, you might have a file that had the English language version of all of the help text was stored in one stream and the German in another, and if they wanted to add Portuguese, it was in another. So they had a, an alternate data stream for each language that the program used. But it's really, I think, less important because many file systems don't support streams, and they just map them to extended attributes. Macs have a lot of backup code in the, in the iPhones and iPads and Macs to, if you can't find a stream, to use something else, to use uh, et cetera. Okay, let, let's try to have Vivek uh, speak on his behalf, <laughs> if we can make it work. And by the way, we did have some patches three years ago or four years ago from one of the guys, uh, maybe somebody at... at, at uh, yeah, Miklos, uh, Miklos sent yeah. some... Uh, POC, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's not simple. So let me, before Joseph is trying to uh, uh, invite Vivek to speak on his own behalf, but uh, what I can say is that there is an implementation, uh, initial implementation by Ioannis uh, that had uh, I notify, specific I notify uh, API uh, added to Fuse protocol. Mm -hmm. Okay, Viva. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so, so uh, as Amir was updating, yeah, so like uh, for the Fuse file system, so basically our goal was what you were trying to do with Samba and Sif. We thought, hey, can, can we do it for what IFS? And uh, that's where like INS started playing with it and did the initial implementation and uh, because I notify is simpler, FA notify the semantics are like uh, much more rich, so a little harder to understand. So we started with something like let's just try to do a remote I notify and uh, just posted one version of patches. So what we did is basically because in our case, uh, 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 so basically what we were doing is that whatever watches you put on the local inodes, we forward it to the remote inode. And uh, so the what IFS just puts the same uses I notify I notify and watches for the events and the moment the events happen it forwards it back to the client and then client uh, sends it back to the user space. So and uh, after that the one feedback we got from Amir is hey this is like uh, underlying it's the FS notify infrastructure which is common and being used both by I notify and FN notify. So what you have implemented is like, uh, you're using that, this common FS notify infrastructure. So try to make it more generic. I'll call, let's call it remote FS notify so that you can support both I notify and FN notify. So that's what IONIS is trying to do now, like extend it to even support FN notify, but because FN notify is so rich, in terms of semantics, we are running into a lot of issues. Uh, for example, uh, like, of course, uh, like uh, Amir said, like there are many things you cannot support. For example, the permission things we cannot support. Uh, FA Notify has something where it opens a file descriptor by default. Then uh, for, on the, for the file on which the event happened, then we, we realized that uh, it requires a path information and all we are sending from the remote is the inode information. Uh, and uh, so like we don't have the path and then probably can't open the file descriptor. So so maybe I'm going into too much into details because INS is still uh, struggling with it and he was seeing many more events. So just taking a step back, like uh, I guess that's what you're also looking for, like a respective implementation detail. Uh, maybe uh, like uh, I'm assuming that you are also looking at that, hey, let's look, let's try to implement this I notify and FN notify for remote file systems and see how many of the events can be mapped, uh, like uh, whatever the protocol is supporting, whatever can be mapped, we'll map and maybe reject the rest of the events which we can't map or don't support. Yep, that makes sense. I think it's very important to understand at a high level what Fuse might want to allow, what NFS might want to allow, what AFS, what SMB, um, you know, can it work on files? Does it only work on directories? Um, because the alternative is really painful. The alternative is that we're polling. And I, I was thinking about Dave's comment about FS cache. FS cache matters over every file system practically, right? I mean, there's a lot of cases where FS cache would matter over Fuse. There's a lot of cases over NFS or SMB 
and maybe this is a better way for FS Cash. Um, you know, it can tie in with delegations and leases. Sure, that's great, but but there's cases where FS Cash could benefit from this as well, um, because right now. Yeah, sorry, uh, Jan yeah. wanted to say something. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah sure. Uh, so, hi. Uh, so my point was giving you like a hook into the file system when uh, uh, when, when a watch like notify watch is added is is the simple part yeah we can do that and i can even imagine like the file system will in the hook have the right to say you know i don't support this so we will propagate the error back to user space basically the somewhat difficult part is more on the so, so when some even like when the file system actually detects events and this is going to be different for different file systems yeah so for somebody you have it mostly soft because the protocol already has the support for the remote notification essentially uh, vivek is struggling with this for weird iofs because there they have to actually develop the protocol to generate these notification on the file system side so, so that's that's actually a separate set of problems let's say but if we now speak about the interface between the file system and the FS notify layer, like telling the file system there is a watch added is the simple thing. But what's more complex is, so you have the event on the file system side and now you want to feed it back into FS notify so that the user can read it from the like FS notify descriptor essentially. Yeah? We have like either I notify descriptor or FA notify descriptor, but it's in principle the same thing. Uh, so because there as vivek said you know there are some expectations from user space about the information that inside the event and you know we have to make sure that the file system can actually provide this information so for inotify it's relatively simple because it's going to be the inode number and the file name essentially and I hope that most file systems will be able to look up the inode for which the event happened, so that and so that we can give it back to user space essentially. Like we so, don't, or so actually, that, it's not inode; it's the watch descriptor for inotify. But anyway, oh sorry. On that question, I looked at my grep for FS notify notifications, the ones that locally are passed up to the application, and look like on open it calls with the file, you know. FS notify open on read, you get FS notify access or modify. So, you know, grepping for this, it looks like there's already things and they mostly just require the file descriptor, mostly, or the file struct, whatever. The, so in many cases- Descriptor is definitely enough, you know. If you have file descriptor, you have more, more than enough. You know, for yeah. this file descriptor, you have basically everything, even for FA notify. Like if you have file descriptor, then that's enough for FA notify in all the cases as well. Yeah, but- but it, it looks for like sometimes you have only yeah it sometimes the problem is you have only the i node yeah and then yeah. then things start to get difficult or maybe you even don't have the i node right then, that's, then, that's the problem we have like at least in our implementation all we have is i node no file yeah. descriptors no path information no mount information nothing i mean i have a similar yeah, exactly. problem right I'll, I'll have a similar problem because it's a directory event right and in some cases i won't have an open file for it um so there are going to be similar problems in in uh, in SMB, right? Because you're going to get a directory notification about a file being modified, right? So you may know. Um, so I was trying to look at these FS notify. Uh, if you look at like remove dir, that's we get a dentry flags. I mean, they're mostly. I guess they're mostly inode, but not all. I, I gave you some examples of file. Um, IOCTAL notifies uh, for access and modifier files, but most of these are dentries or inodes. So we definitely need dentry so that we basically dentry is a way to propagate the name into FS notify yeah, so that it can get reported. Uh, so so dentry is needed, but also the mount information is needed for FA notify, for example, because uh, like. Like we don't have to support this yeah, at least initially, but for the, uh, for us to be able to support full set of FA notify features, you would have to also like 
tell the mount point, but I'm perfectly fine with just telling, you know, file system returning basically not supported for, for you know, if the user attempts to use, say, the mount point watches or even the file system watches. You know, if, if Jan, we are Jan, going... Yeah. Sorry, Jan, we, we cannot support mount filtering for remote changes anyway, because the change is remote. It's not from a local mount. Yep. Yep. That's true. It's true. Also, we That's may be able true. to modify some of these helpers, like, you know, the ones that are files. Um, like, FS Notify X Adder is a dentry, I know, right? So, FS Notify X Adder, you're writing to an X Adder, it's using the dentry or the inode. Write to a file, but not write to an X adder or uses file. So there may be a way we can just create some helper functions that FS notify, modify dentry or something, right? So we may be able to avoid the, the need for a file by just. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible to do that. Um, yeah, we need to look into it, but it's possible. I looked at this code. Like what? Uh... Sorry, somebody saying something. Sorry, like, I was just saying that I look, I've looked at this code before, and usually these things are just wrappers around the main thing that does the path lookup. So yeah. like, it's just file because that was easily easily there. You can yeah. like, if you look at the helper, it actually like breaks down the inode and entry. So it's not I mean, that hard. And that's really good, and it, it avoids this problem here. If you look at the screen here, like, I don't want an app to have to call. Uh, an FS specific IOCTAL. I mean, I offer it, so you can, you know, we got user space tools, you can write for this kind of thing, but, but I really don't want this. I want people to be using something that's a little saner. And I have kind of PTSD from thinking one of my first jobs after graduate school, looking at the OS2 and Windows wheel watcher. That's so crazy. Polling every whatever just to look at the darn, and it's terrible for networks to be polling. So we don't want to have apps polling if we can avoid it. And you know anything we can do to avoid that, to sane use of notifies, to me seems like kind of a win. The hard part, though, was you know if you look at the proposal thing, was it you know, it's just a little bit harder than I thought to figure out how to plumb the registration of the events. It's not too bad, but the registration of events was a little bit tricky for I notify and a little bit trickier for FA notify. Not not because of the mapping of flags, but just sort of like making sure that I understood where you'd have the check to see if a file system exported notify, and if it did, also call notify, because there's no harm in notifying locally, yeah. as well as having the notify from remote um, on that same mount. So anyway, it didn't look too bad, but. Yeah, I, I think it's, the answer was reasonable to call it like a provide a callback to let the file system know if a watch is coming. And I think that between you and Vivek, you can probably work out a reasonable interface. That sounds reasonable to me. But what about subtree watches? Because I mean, Windows, can you can do a watch yep. on an entire subtree. Yep. I, yep. Uh, I, don't whether, I don't know whether we can do that in FA Notify or specify well, that. Yeah, everybody wants that. And well, um, the good news is, as long as you're, if you're for the whole mount, I can call a subtree watch on the mount. And the fact that Windows supports something you don't, it hurts Samba server, but I don't care as well, a client. The mount thing is, uh, as John said, it's, you have to know the mount the operation is coming from in order to filter by the mount. And that's only available if you have file extract, not if you have dentry. But, so, but I mean, if you're waiting on a file system mount, didn't we just call out and say do a subtree for, you tell the server to do a, a subtree watch on that whole subtree starting at the top? I don't know. Well, uh, several approaches have been attempted, uh, several patch sets have been posted. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, and it's I think not the, trivial. And I think the other thing to remember is that this is an asynchronous non-perfect mechanism using change notify, but NFS and you know SMB and every protocol also supports a strict approach where you'd have uh, delegations, leases, usually not worth the cost to have all those, but it is an option as well to implement it underneath in other file systems. But um, I think letting the file system decide on that is fine but you'd have to just check to make sure the file system supports this operation and if not, just fall through the current code and not do anything different, there's no changes. But I think one of the things I wanna mention because we're all running low on time 
is that what bothered me was when I went into XFS test, especially after the discussions that Ted and you guys were all having, Lua, all these guys, like, do you see any tests? What, what, what? No, I didn't I was try, I was uh, watching the chat, what? I, I couldn't find any oh, XFS tests. Oh, the tests, the tests are not an XFS test. Uh, okay. An XFS I mean, test? Yes, 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 okay. we maintain our tests in LTP. So it's great, just something we need to make sure that we're aware of because we want to make sure we don't break obvious things. Yes, when we, we add tests for every new feature and we yeah. have test coverage for bugs that we fix. Okay. You know, there may be cases, and we can talk about this in the afternoon, is like where we may refer an XFS test or the XFS test wiki to other test suites, but you know, at a high level, I was like, well, how do I try this? Let me run a test case and show it. And then I'm like, oh shoot, I can't find a test case. And I could have run you know, a sample program myself, but I was being lazy. Um, but I do think that, uh, that testing um, the I notify and FA notify, especially as it evolves, is gonna be important um, because there are, there are apps that depend on this other than just Explorer, or I mean, the, the GUI, the desktop. Yeah, I, I think this is a historical artifact uh, from the point of, at a certain point in time, those folks who were most interested in uh, XFS tests, which tended to be the core file system developers, were using XFS tests. Um, people who, uh, if you actually look at denotify and inotify, it's in the core VFS and the people who were doing that work, uh, or maybe it was the LTP folks. Anyway, the tests are in LTP um, and I think I've never worried about the fact that there's no I notify or FA notify tests and XFS tests because I don't worry about I notify and denotify. They are totally implemented in the VFS. Now, that was a point in time. There may be a point where if there are, you know, network remote file systems that need to do special things to implement FA notify and denotify, we should put tests in XFS tests. I'm just merely stating that the historical reason was that at the point in time, those people who were most regularly writing XFS tests and running XFS tests were uh, separate from those folks who were mostly doing I notify and denotify, and that's just a historical thing. Yeah, we do have to be careful though, like take your example. I mean, you call, you call FS notify. Now you're calling it on an event and you only have one event you're waiting on, but or sorry, you're notifying on, but, but even ext4 has specific FS notify code. I didn't realize this until last night at like one in the morning. It's like, what the heck? Why does ext4 have notify code in it? Yeah, very recent. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty recent. All right, let's, let's move on to the, okay. the next topic, which okay. is you anyway, but <laughs> we're, we're about done on this one. Okay, sounds good. And um, we can follow up afterwards. Um, okay, so. Let's talk about another fun.